Hello friends and welcome to this fourth part on the design of my power amp. Now um, in this part I want to discuss um, three topics and I will briefly go over the filament supply of, of, for the driver and then I want to talk about the power structure. Janos made a very good comment on one of my videos, earlier videos in this series about over dimensioning the transformers and I just want to mention how I've overcome some of the normal requirements that I do here even though there's over dimensioning but it's specifically targeted and then third I will discuss a little bit uh, I will discuss um, my future plans um, and improvements that I want to make to this amp now first of all the filament supply now that's a simple one um, rather than working with 6.3 volts because it's one of the secondaries uh, it's actually for the driver it gets power from this transformer um, I'm using a voltage doubler because then I can drop a bit more voltage and that was more effective in reducing ripple. So um, you can see here there's two Scotties here, um, the two uh, capacitors that you normally see and then I've got an RC stage, an RC stage and then one final one here near to the driver tube itself um, which is a bit higher quality. Um, it's some kind of Nichicon I think here, um, audio, an, an audio type um, capacitor. And that's the final RC and that brings the ripple under one millivolt, um, which is enough in this uh, driver configuration with sort of, you know, times 60 amplification or so, um, that re getting it under one millivolt actually uh, results in inaudible um, result. The, 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 there's no hum basically audible on, on the output. Um, so that's the design of the filament. So then let's talk about Janos's point about over dimensioning and how I've done it here. So what we've got in my amp here is um, I've got a um, this is an 80 watt transformer here and we've got a, a 56 watt transformer over there both are R cores which I really like because the um, just the influence um, apparently technically of course they, they have less um, coupling between the primary and the secondary um, um, the signals coming um, distortions coming across or extra noise on the line coming across and um, the magnetic field the the amount of stray um, hum and so on uh, emf basically coming from the transformer is quite low it's it's quite directed um, so if you have to work in a cramped chassis space i find these uh, be very suit it's very easy to work around them um, without um, the rest of your circuit picking up um, unnecessary hum. So that's that. Um, so over dimensioning. Now, when Janus mentioned that, you know, over the, and if you look at his amp designs, you can see that there's a huge over dimensioning uh, going on. And typically I would say, yes, that is very needed and it's especially needed for single ended designs. Now, with my amp, um, as you have seen the previous videos, my output stage is um, differential and then I've got a single ended driver so with the differential output stage running in, in complete class A1 there is hardly any difference in the, the power draw over the whole cycle of the amplifier at any stage and so the only variation that happens is here with the driver stage now what I've done there so in the power because I've got a this is the power the regulated power board um, the regulator for the, the output stage and here you've got the regulator for the driver stage so what i've done is this has a constant power draw and then of course the filament supply for the tubes that do the regulation um, they take quite some power um, and they take one amp each at 6.3 volts so i power all those from this transformer um, including the filament supply for for the, the, the 4p1ls so that all gets fed each because this has three secondaries of uh, 6.3 volts and um, so the over dimensioning is most limited on this transformer um, because the power draw is almost constant and I'm using about 40 watts of the 80 watts that are available here but as said this hasn't this has hardly any variation so it's only the difference between the output tubes almost that is the only um, variance in power draw um, it, it's really minimal if i look at what the, the lc stage the filtering stage does um, between the out and the in here it, it 
it is min minimal in normal situations. Um, I can't, of course, measure really well all the dynamic uh, situations, but this does does do very little work in in um, yeah, and that's because of the the constant power draw, really. Um, so so the the only variation is really potentially in current draw is the single ended stage now. Due to the windings, I had to actually do the filament supply gets uh, provided by here, and I also do the quiescent current for the driver. Come the, the the power for the driver comes from here. So, of the fifty six watts that are available here, I'm using probably six seven watts maybe at max um, from this transformer. So this is the most over dimensioned, and it's related to the single ended um, uh, driver stage. So this is where. The overdimensioning comes in and it is hugely overdimensioned. Now, later in the design, I actually went with open secondary. So here we have the interstage transformer, so the driver goes there and that produces the signal for the output stage here for the two, two output tubes. Now, that is about seven, uh, um, nine milliamps that it takes, uh, so it's a very constant power draw, but because the secondaries are open. Um, it is a huge resistance and the, the, the load line is almost flat, which means you've got a huge variation in voltage, but not so much in current. And, um, and I found that just it just pipped having, for example, a 40K and a 40K grid, grid resistor there. But what it did probably do is, is level out the, the, the variances in, in power draw um, here. So. I, you know, I can second Janos, especially when you have single ended facets in your amp that you need to have a huge over dimensioning. And it's then especially good when you have variation that the filament supply doesn't come off the same transformer. However, in my design where everything is almost has a constant power draw, I think the, the, the requirements are a bit lessened on, on over dimensioning. Um, and, and, and so what I've done is I've sort of saved on these, um, even though, you know, uh, having 80 plus 56, so that's uh, like 136 watts of power for, um, you know, a power draw that is under 50 watts total is over dimensioning, but it's not shocking over the dimensioning. And of course, then I added, um, you know, 40 Henry um, um, chokes in, in, in here for, uh, for both the driver and for the output stage. And so the, the over dimensioning has uh, shifted. So I hope you sort of get a bit of the sense how I've sort of balanced uh, balanced those requirements out for this amp. And, and you know, it's just a little bit of, um, you know, working smartly with uh, without having to invest hugely in, uh, it is sort of balancing the cost out over the design and, and letting each, you know, the design goes with the limitations and uh, I've tried to work within a budget and um, and get the most out of it. And then it's just smartly moving components around, I would say, to get the most out of every um, every element. So it is a bit of an exercise in that. And, and when designs do that, I think you, you tend to end up with um, um, designs that do really well, especially for the amount that you put into it. Um, so, yeah. That's that topic. Now let's get to improvements. Um, just one final note. Really what I want to do is, um, especially on the driver stage first, is probably where I'm going to experiment with first. I want to go to, to a shunt regulated um, thing uh, in a quite a simple circuit that I want to replace it. So I, I want to replace the current pass tube setup where we've got the regulator and rectifier board. And um, we've got the, tube, the, the regulating tube there. I need to be a bit careful because still everything is under power. But I want to replace that with a forward uh, fed um, um, shunt regulated tube. So I want to use the same tube, the same power tube that is um, for battery regulation. I'm going to use that. However, I'm going to use it, I feed forward the, the, the sine wave to the grid so that um, the tube immediately gets fed forward the, the, sig the signal um, to compensate for, the, for any ripple on the thing and it also can draw the power down so um, that's that's my major improvement that I want to make and just really also for my personal experience here the difference between a uh, 
shunt regulated and a pass regulated um, setup and plus that allows me to remove the last transistor really out of the circuit it's a tip 50 um, so that that transistor goes out and it's, it's nowhere near the signal part but really I want to um, remove that a bit as well so um, and then I'm probably going to address this cheap uh, regulator board that I use for the 4.2 uh, volt filament supply that, that powers these. Um, that's, that's, that needs uh, replacing by a sort of more classic, uh, classic circuit. Um, so those are the plans for this amp. Um, I hope you enjoyed this series. If you have any questions left on this, um, post them in the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, that's it for now. And, um, yeah, I'll hope to catch you in the next video. Thank you for watching and um, have a brilliant day. Bye bye.